In this lecture, we'll dive more deeply into human resource selection and placement. Selection is the process of collecting information about applicants and using that information to decide which ones to hire. It includes the application itself, as well as interviewing, testing, and reference checking. This process can be quite lengthy and expensive. If an organization finds the right employees, though, through its recruiting and selection process, it will not have to spend as much money later recruiting, recruiting, selecting, and training replacement employees. That's why it's so important to find good matches with what your culture is like, what job responsibilities are required, and then the types of individuals that you bring into the organization. You want them to last a long time as employees. In the first stage of the selection process, the individual fills out an application form and perhaps has a brief interview. The application form asks for the applicant's name, address, telephone number, education, previous work experience. The goal at this stage of the selection process is to get acquainted with the applicants and to weed out those who are obviously not qualified for the job. Many companies now accept online applications. To get a better view of the fit between the application, applicant and the company, the online application may contain a questionnaire that asks applicants more specific questions from how they might react to certain situations, to personality attributes like self-esteem or the ability to interact with people. The next phase of the selection process is the, is the interview. This involves discussing or meeting with employees and getting a detailed sense as to what that employee is like. You get information about their experiences and their skills. They also understand, or you might ask questions about why they change jobs, their attitudes towards the job, their attitudes towards the job or to working, and an idea of whether that person would fit in with the company. Furthermore, the interviewer can answer the applicant's questions about the requirements for the job, about the compensation, working conditions, etc., about some of the company policies, the organizational culture, so on. The potential employee's questions may be just as revealing about his or her fit with the organization as are his or her answers. Interviewing for a job has traditionally required interviewees to go to a physical location. Um, that's a, often involved travel to quite a distance. However, since around 2011, HR managers have taken to video conferencing to conduct interviews up to 40%, 49% of the time. This has not only increased the diversity of people being interviewed as they no longer are required to travel, but has decreased the amount of time that's used in the recruiting process, as well as the cost of computing, of, commute, of recruiting. Sorry. The list on this slide shows some of the common questions asked during interviews. You can take a look at this. Generally, there are asking about yourself, why should I hire you? Please tell me about your future objectives. Has your education prepared you for your career? Have you been a team player? Did you encounter any conflict with previous professors or employers? Um, what's your biggest weakness? How would, you, how would your uh, professors describe you? What are some of the qualities that a manager should possess and if you would turn back time, what might you change in, the, in what you've done to date? This list is some things that people, this is some, a list of some mistakes that are made in interviewing. Um, not taking it seriously, not dressing appropriately, not appropriately discussing one's experience and abilities, being too modest about accomplishments, talking too much, talking too much about compensation, speaking negatively of a former employee, not asking uh, the right kind of questions, not being enthusiastic, or not engaging in the appropriate follow-up to an interview, calling in, seeing how, you know, what the, when you would hear that sort of thing. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. Essentially, uh, an employer is looking for someone who wants the job, understands the job, and will be engaged in the job and will become an important player in the organization. So you want to 
become interested in what's going on and show interest through questioning and interactions. Another step in the selection process is often testing. This is ability or performance tests are used to determine whether an applicant has the skills necessary for the job. One of the most commonly used tests is the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Myers-Briggs tells you, uh, is a worldwide test that tells that millions of people take every year. Um, they also might have physical examinations to determine your suitability for, for the jobs, particularly if it's a long-term position. Many companies require applicants to be screened for illegal drug use, for example. Because computer knowledge is a requirement for many jobs today, certain companies also require applications to take uh, keyboard tests, or typing tests to determine their knowledge of MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and other programs they might need on the job. Um, like the application form of the interview, testing serves to eliminate those who do not meet the job's requirements. Personality tests, like the Myers-Briggs that was mentioned earlier, are often used to assess an applicant's potential for a certain kind of job. For example, extroversion and the love of people would be good qualities for a sales job or a job in a retail location. Um, where social interaction is part of what the uh, customer experience is all about. Interestingly, there does not seem to be any difference between introversion and extroversion when making someone a good manager. And then the last thing before actually making an offer is offer and reference checking. Uh, the company would check the applicant's references. Reference checking usually involves verifying educational background and previous work experience. An internet search is often done to determine social media activities or other public activities. Background checking is important because applicants may misrepresent themselves on their applications or resumes. Researcher Research has shown that those who are willing to exaggerate or rely on their resumes are more likely to engage in unethical behavior. Reference checking is often a vital, albeit often overlooked, stage in the selection process. Managers charged with hiring should be aware, however, that many organizations will confirm only that an applicant is a former employee, perhaps with beginning and ending work dates, but they will not release details about the quality of work of the the quality of the prospective employees work they'll only say many companies when you contact them they'll only say yes they did work here uh, so you re really get probably additional information out of personal references where people tell you about the qualities of the individual but then you have also have to take into account that they're often they often have a personal relationship with the individual as well so that's a uh, the, the the basic part of the uh, the job seeking or the the, the the job development interview process, application interview process. In the next lecture, we'll talk more about policy and legal issues in HRM.